Ride. In the name of Allah, the beneficent and merciful, all praises due to Allah, the Lord of the worlds. We want to thank uh, Brother Michael for returning. And we have a special, 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 special guest, his beloved mother. And as we always know that a mother's love is next to God. And no matter what you go through, your mother will always be by your side. At all given times, you have to do some really right for your mother to say, I give up. But that was never Miss Betty's uh, spirit. And we are also um, in the presence of uh, Brother Michael and Brother Brother Thomas, another beautiful brother that, you know, it is good to see that through trials and tribulations that you are actually uh, together to see the end part. It's always difficult from the beginning to see how it's going to end, but we thank God that it ended in a beautiful note. So with that being said, uh, Brother Michael, let's reintroduce, reintroduce yourself, my brother. Yes, sir. Brother Michael Muhammad over here representing in Shot Town by way of D.C. <laughs> and we just live a life, loving life, man. Happy to be back on the show. Yes, sir. Praise be to Allah. And then if you can say the best for last. So we have Brother Thomas. We're going to introduce you to us and tell the people a little about yourself. Being that's the first time that you're on the program, good brother. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Brother Thomas. Yeah, uh, over here in DC. Uh, do, we do we do music. We do some acting. We got some productions going on. When we over here, we actually in suit in Maryland representing you. <laughs> and then, as we said before, we're going to say the best for last. Um, when you say strength, you got to say mom. When you say love, you got to say mom. So I hope I gave her the proper introduction. Miss Betty. Yes. Yes, hey. yes Mayor. Yes. 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 Um, Betty, tell uh, the, the, the listening audience a little about yourself. They'll be going to get into it. Privileged mother of two sons, greatest sons could ever be born in this world. Mm -hmm. And I am so proud of them. And I thank God, Allah God, for all of his many blessings. And he's done a great job with these two gentlemen. And I, as a single mom at the time, didn't do that whipping stuff. So that probably was why they did what they did. I should have got my belt out a long time ago, but praise God. It's never too late, man. We can always get the belt, so it's never too late. It's <laughs> never too late. That they turned out to be. I am so proud of them, and I grin from ear to ear, and I'm excited to be on your show because I'm proud of you as well. Oh, praise me, sir. Thank you, man. <laughs> Hold up. Hold up, brother. Hold up. <laughs> man, I done got some woofers. See, I ain't gonna no, I ain't gonna put you out there, Mom. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, brother. Let <laughs> me <laughs> say that uh, for the, uh, the latest segment of, of the program. But uh, the reason we have invited um Miss Betty on because we don't get the side of the story of the mothers of uh, what it means to overcome difficulties and challenges, especially when it comes to your children. And anybody who's a parent, when you love your child, you do all you can to protect them. But when they, that world grabs them, it's always a challenge when you want to put things back in perspective where your faith is definitely tested when you go through certain trials. So with that being said, uh, the, when we first talked to Brother Michael, we were speaking about his book, um, Welcome the Road to Recovery. And it's a beautiful book. You go to Amazon and uh, definitely get it. It's a beautiful book. It's a good read. It's called Walking the Road to Recovery, Nine Steps in Motion by Brother Michael Muhammad. So please go on to Amazon, support our brother. It's a great read. And for anybody who's around back in the early 80s and 90s, you know that that crack era was very serious. And it uh, did some harm in our community to why we see the things that we have going on today. So with that being said, being that mom is the star of the show, um, tell us a little bit about your children's childhood. 
We didn't, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't. Uh, tell us about something that, you know, not to embarrass him too much, because, you know. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> not too much, but it's a little something about your children growing up. How were they as young men growing up? Well, actually, when they were very young, they were the best of ever, you know, because they didn't know how to do anything but play and enjoy life. So as they grew older, they got to hanging out and start doing things that I really probably didn't know too much about. Actually, I didn't even know what was going on. So I was in the dark, didn't even know a lot of stuff that was happening in their life. So they had that, uh, whatever you call it, to kind of hide that stuff. So I didn't know a lot of stuff that was going on with them. So I, I was not privileged to all of what was going on in their life. But I was working, so I had to work right. so that we could maintain, you know. So they were pretty slick. <laughs> but she kept up prayer, bro. She kept up that prayer. <laughs> that's, that's a good thing. But do you see it as, because we want this to be a, a, um, a learning, you know, program because a lot of single mothers that may have boys or girls that work, it's a little different. Like when I was growing up, you know, I was fortunate to have mom stay at home and dad went to work and our balance was there. And as we can see a lot in our community, we're losing that balance every day where most of the time you couldn't do too much because everybody's mother was your mother and everybody's father was your father. You know, everybody had an eye out on you. So cutting school and doing things he wasn't supposed to, the community was one big parent, you know, making sure that, you know, if your child's out of place, you know, that would um, intervene if we saw something that was out of pocket, especially if he was out of school at 11 o'clock in the afternoon or, you know, and then somebody's going to ask you, why are you not in school? That challenge was always there. So we want to pray that we get back to that time and era. So with that being said, ma'am, when did you start noticing your children, you know, saying, you know, when you, as you were working, starting to go astray towards the streets? I never saw it. I never saw it. They were slick and cool. And somehow or another, they did what they now. One time, they were still in my car from the parking <laughs> stuff. Now, it wasn't in the book, I brother. Kept, <laughs> Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. It was Thomas. Yeah, Thomas, Thomas was driving. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> right. yeah. You know, and I thought after a while, it's like I parked in one place. <laughs> and then, you know, the car was not there when I got back. And it just happened too regular. And I thought, hold up. So that, when it really dawned on me what was going on, I said, give me the key. I knew they had <laughs> made a key right. and was still in the car during the day Ooh. while I was at work. Hello. So that ended some of what was going on, but they kept me in the dark. They were slick. So I didn't know until probably after it was almost oh, over. Thanksgiving dinners 15 years later. That's when she said, When y'all, when was y'all doing all of that? <laughs> <laughs> I remember reading the stories. You said it was Thomas, your brother. It was saying that, you know, it was pretty much the ringleader with you. That's fair to say? <laughs> pretty you know, much. Brother Thomas or Brother Michael? <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm going by, by Michael, but yes. Sir. So, brother, uh, brother Thomas, you know, what was it about, you know, because this is, like I said, you're learning. Because you had a single mother, did you feel because you didn't have that challenge that it made it more accessible for you to do things that most young people shouldn't be doing? Would it be fair to say? Right. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, we did most of what we did while she was at work. And we were last key kids. And then we did other things that uh, we did while she was asleep. So mom worked so hard to make sure that we had everything that we needed. We were we never wanted for anything. We always right. had food, shelter, clothes. Growing up, we had all the toys, everything we wanted. When we asked for it, she got it for us. So you know, we were real good. And, you know, being an actor, I was able to play like <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> everything was cool. And uh, so, like I said, we would do most of what we did while she was at work and while she was sleeping. And then uh, we thought we were slick. Uh, <laughs> and then she realized 
She put the uh, we were putting the car in a different parking space. She said, "Wait a minute, <laughs> these jokers moving the car." Hey, well, I gotta tell you, well, one time, bro, we stayed out longer than we were supposed to stay out in our preteen. I guess we were like thirteen and twelve, and um, <laughs> mom was waiting behind the door, bro. She had that broomstick. <laughs> <laughs> We didn't do that no more. We we stopped. You know? We can't stay out past the curfew. Miles was hitting hitting the jokers in the elbows and the shoulders and the knees with that broomstick. <laughs> and we learned we learned that lesson. <laughs> so we did, and we definitely uh, 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 obeyed that law to get in get in the house in time. So, but then we still would sneak out after she go went to sleep. So, you know, we we were pretty smooth and slick about how we did things. Yes, ma'am. So, Miss Betty, my question I'm gonna ask you is: I know a lot of uh, single mothers who are raising young men or boys. Do you feel that it would have took um, a lot off your shoulders to some degree if Dad was there to be the disciplinary? person to take care of two young men because sometimes Absolutely. fathers uh, approach things a lot different than mothers and I know for myself um, I was scared of my pops not in a way where he was abusive but you know he drew the line in the sand you know he made sure that you know if if um, if we didn't make the curfew or we didn't do our chores the responsibility of what a man is supposed to do you know, he made sure that he made a stern presence in me and my brother's life to make sure that, you know, that certain things can't go by and the dangers of being in the streets. You know, he was very um, stern about that, too, about us not being out there. So do you believe that if their father was more in the home, that Absolutely. he probably wouldn't have dealt with the things he dealt You want to speak on that, man? Absolutely. They probably wouldn't have even thought about doing a lot of the stuff that they did if their father was right there at the same. It, 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 they wouldn't have even considered doing some of the things that they did. I'm almost sure. So they tried it. They took advantage of my femininity. You know, mom, <laughs> you know, she's not she don't know what's going on. They were pretty slick. I, I, I realized that after a while. But see, I got smart, too, because I started watching different things. So it's like, give the give me the keys. I mean, they made car uh, keys to the car and moved the car while I was at work. I mean, that's really kind of smart, right? But you know, <laughs> eventually, I thought to myself, now I know I after it happened too many times. So it's <laughs> like, uh, uh, something is going on here. So I just went home and said, give me the keys. So they look real, you know, like, oh wow, she figured this thing out, but. That that stopped some of their mischievous things that they were doing. I'm sure. Yeah. See, but see, sure mom, moms, was, moms was moms was um, she. You know, she was raised in the country, um, North Carolina, little town called Pelham, North Carolina, right outside of Danville. And her parents, my my papa and Big Ma, you know, God fearing parents. So, I mean, she was raised. Um, as a good girl, you know what I'm saying? And so a lot of the stuff um, that was Thomas happening well. in city life, you know what I'm saying? The Mom presence really of wasn't hip to a it. man in the home, you know I mean? a father, what have you. Um, how important do you think that was that if that element was in your life, how you would have turned out in reference to the things, even ideas of even trying to... Uh, misbehaving any factor that how important it was for you, you to have a father there. Brother Michael? Well, you know, naturally, naturally, you know, it's important. You know, it's it's natural, you know what I mean, for it to be that way, you know. Um, and it's hard to say, you know, it's really hard to say uh, whether it would have turned out different or not, you know what I'm saying? Um, but naturally you you know you would think that it would because that's just the natural order of things you know what i'm saying um and so uh but it's hard you know it's really hard to really go back and you know to go back and say yeah if this was that then that would be this you know what i'm saying uh, you know everything i believe happened 
the way it was supposed to happen. But naturally, of course, you know. Yes, brother Thomas. Same question, brother. I would, you know, how I would say, I would say, I would say, absolutely, it would have made a difference. I, I, for two, I got, I have two examples. Yes, sir. the first example was for when we were in North Carolina every summer. Moms would send us to North Carolina every summer, and all Big Mom had to do was say, "I'm gonna get to Papa. I'm gonna tell Papa, and hey, that's straighten us up quick. Cause we ain't want to, we want to see Papa down in North Carolina. So I already know that if a man was home and Mom said, "Okay, wait till Pops get wait till, wait till your father get home and let him deal with that," because that's a whole different situation. And then the influence that the brothers had on us in the streets. The, the the way of male influence with the older brothers had us moving when we right. were in the streets. So just knowing those two things from a, a, a older male influence, how it had us moving, I know that it, if if it was one here in the house while we were growing up, it would have made a difference for sure. Yes, man. Yes, sir. <laughs> so uh, the question I want to ask Miss um, Betty is: um, when you learned of drug use of Brother Michael and the severity of it. What was going through your mind? You had to work. What I was- never knew. I never knew. Wow. I never knew. He he, he did it. I, I never knew. So I couldn't, could, I didn't have any idea until it was almost over. With, you know, I never <laughs> knew. But see, my sister he confided in my sister rather than in me and her husband. So it's like, I didn't know what was going on. Well, I kept me in the dark. Until that morning. I didn't make you feel though, because you know, it was, this is your child, this is your son, you know, and how did that make you feel once you learned of what was going on? By the time I learned, he was in the process of getting himself together it was almost over when i found out it was over it, it was it, it had been going on for years and years and years and somehow or another i never knew he he was smart enough to not let me know what was going on and i guess with thomas being around the two of them conspired i guess to keep it from me so I didn't know till it was almost over. Okay. So by then, of course, there was there was he was on his way to help himself. Gotcha. So he didn't really need me because he had somebody else that he had already gotten to help him get through it. Yes, ma'am. So what, brother Michael and brother Thomas, was it was it a respect aspect of not disappointing your mother to why you kept it? So quiet, you know, because, you know, from my understanding from reading the book and you know, prior, prior last interview, brother, you know, you know, you was going through a lot of trials and a lot of tribulations. And by the time is being that it's your brother, you've seen a lot because he probably could find in you as well. I can imagine because you've seen things. So what was that like, you know, keeping that secret from your mother? Is that more or less from not disappointing her? Yeah, absolutely. And then, and then they were, and then they were, uh, you know, it kind of got to a point. I'm I, I, like, like Mom said, for a while I didn't know either. But then certain things started happening where I figured something was going on, and uh, so I approached him with it, and, and and definitely didn't want moms to worry about it because it was some things I was going through myself. So I knew what kind of toll that would take on her. So, but um, he he confided in Auntie, and then I think, man, I think I got married early and was out of the house. So he was doing things that I didn't even really know about in inside the house. And uh, uh, but definitely it was something for mom working so hard to, to keep everything for providing for us. You know, that's that disappointing thing is was something we definitely didn't want, especially on crack. No, he said that mom's going to do it. But Mike was on the move, bro. Mike was doing his thing, bro. He 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 stayed he stay out all the hours of the night, and we, you know we didn't know what was going on. To like mom said, to to everything hit the roof. You know when when he he reached out, 
It's, and like I'm about to kill myself out here with this madness and I need to reach out to somebody. And man, thank God for my auntie's husband who was a minister at the time that turned brother to some good scriptures and good things to help him dig deep down inside. Uh -huh. And he was ready. He, he was ready to, to, you know, to save himself because he knew he was headed for headed for self destruction. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. So, oh, brother, brother Michael, um, for our conversation, brother, you know, when did you feel that it was? You know, I, I know. Remember you talking about your uncle playing a large part in your life and your aunt being someone that helped you out when she told you that before you do anything, give me a call, maybe we can talk you out of it. And that's mm -hmm. a beautiful thing. So why did you feel that you could turn to your aunt but not turn to your mother in that in that aspect? Was she more, you could say streetwise or right, 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 right. Yeah. See they she she grew up with her own challenges. She was more aware of that life. You know what I'm saying? Right. And um, and so she she had an understanding, and I knew that she had um gone through something similar. Like, well, crack wasn't even a thing when when they were coming up, but she had her own challenges, and and she knew that life. Paul, God rest his soul. I mean, he was <laughs> he was a hustler, and he didn't have no problems saying that. He said that he became a pastor. You know, he turned his life around, and became a pastor, and he talked about that himself, like. You know, I mean, hell, we still is we. He had a he had a big old stash, though. He he put a little bit up front so we wouldn't look for the big stash. He said, I know they were still in this, so I'm gonna put this this little stash up front <laughs> so they wouldn't even look for the big stash. <laughs> I'm glad that Miss Betty's taking this with a smile. <laughs> Hey, mom didn't know what was that. It's all over now. You know, it's no I understand, but <laughs> it's looking like I'm real protective what I say around my mother. That's why I'm, I'm smiling like this because you know, <laughs> they talking like that even there. <laughs> hey, we 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 told we was telling these stories at Thanksgiving dinner. I told you, bro, and she was like, "When was all of this going on?" I must have been real slow. I was real slow. I was slower than I ever thought I was. I thought I was it, but I was apparently not. <laughs> she was fly, <laughs> Betty. Child. You know what I mean? Classy, classy Betty. Now, moms work real hard, man. And that's the that's a whole piece, man. That's the the beauty of it is um, just like her parents, you know what I'm saying? She was a praying woman, you know, a praying woman. She, she um, put her trust in God to raise two boys. I mean, you have to put your trust in God. You know what I'm saying? And so that that's the big part that um, kind of freed her from all the anxiety and worry, you know, because I mean, we were in some, we were in some tight situations, man, growing up from, from start to finish, you know, you know, them eighties, them nineties, DC was the murder capital when we were doing some of the stuff we were doing, man. So, you know, um, that would have been a lot of stress and worry, uh, you know what I'm saying, on mom. So it was it was almost like God protected her from even knowing, you know what I'm saying? And we did our best whenever we could to make sure she didn't know. So she didn't <laughs> have to stress and worry about that and continue to be the best mom she could be. <laughs> The best mom ever. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm definitely going to go on Amazon and find you the biggest belt that you can possibly get. Because <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I should go over there and help you out with that. <laughs> hey, hey, look, I got to tell a story. That time, Tom, you should tell the whole story, man. Because <laughs> I came home first. I was, I wanted to go home. But we was down the hill. I, it was dark. I was kind of scared to go home by myself and he over there messing with some girl, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, man, we got to go home. So after a while, I just said, man, I'm going to go here. I'm, I, just, I ran all the way home, ran all the way up the hill, ran in the house. Man, mom's whooped my hind pots, you know what I'm saying? And I know, so by the time Thomas came in the house, she, she whooped me so bad, she got tired. She laid down, right? <laughs> so... 
I was in the bed and we had bunk beds. Thomas sneak snuck in the house, snuck in the room, but then she kicked that door down. Wow, 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 wow! Got the wedding on him, but she was too tired at that point. So when she left out the room, he gonna ask me, Mike, you, 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 you real crying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm real crying, man. I got the worst of it. <laughs> but uh, anyway, <laughs> that was <that> story. <laughs> uh, let's just talk about the the, the, the role of church, because I, you know, it sounds like I said, you know, Miss Betty, you know, you you did nothing wrong. You did everything that you possibly can from what you know, and I'm pretty sure you gave it one thousand percent, and your heart was in the right place, and. You know, uh, I, I'm kind of happy that you didn't get to see what you saw based on the stories that your sons are openly telling you about. But your faith and your prayers, how did, how did, how did that keep you balanced from the things that you were aware of? Not as much, but how did that keep you balanced and give you the strength to maintain the household and two young men in Washington, D.C.? I had no choice. I said, I have to make this work. So I did everything that I could do to provide the best life for them that they could have. So it was no question about what, and I tried to give them most of the things that they wanted and definitely needed. So I just believed that I knew God was going to make things work out for all of us. And so I just kept on persevering and believing in what God I knew about the Lord. Because like they told you, I grew up in a praying background family. So we always did the right things. So I really, in my other mind, I didn't even believe they were doing all the things that they were doing. But then once I thought about it, we were in the big time D.C., uh, so everything's going on there. But I never was tempted to do any of that stuff that was going on out in the world, as you see, because I wasn't used to that. I grew up in a different kind of situation totally than them. Both parents, grandparents, grands, aunts and uncles, we were a close-knit family and really still are. So... I never knew I was I was a good girl. I wasn't out there doing any of that <clears throat> foolishness. So I, I guess I really didn't even think about them doing it until it got to a point where I got suspicious, you know, of different things. So and my sister never really shared any information that she knew. She was trying to save me too, I guess. So but why do you believe that your sister was trying to keep it away from you? Because I think she knew because like I said, like they said, she did some of the stuff. I, I was a good girl. Like I said, I didn't do none of that Just hanging out and all of that kind of stuff. So she was a little bit more out there than me. So she wanted to keep me from being exposed to a lot of what was really going on. So I, she just stepped in and took over with the foolishness that was going on with them okay. and just kept me out of it yes so i appreciate her for that you know okay as long as you appreciate her for that that's what matters so when did you decide that you know the church uh play a part in their um the development because based off the book uh brother michael spoke highly of uh reverend really reverend willie wilson and how uh union temple was a large part of your uh, background as well. So where did you find strength of that to make sure your boys got exposed to the church? To well, um, I thought that this would be an opportunity and I knew that I would get help once they got to church because I knew the pastor and knew his background and I knew a lot of the other male, the diggings and digging. I knew that they would be available to show them mm -hmm. the right way to go. All I needed to do was just expose them, get them to going. And then, of course, Michael got into the bass guitar. So that was like help for 
his whatever. And Thomas can sing a little bit. So they got involved. <laughs> so that helped. <laughs> Listen, he can sing a little bit. He's, he's, he thinks he can sing a whole lot. Well, they are good. We, we, but we have that. That's a family tradition. We have a lot of talents in my family as far as the singing and the musician stuff goes. So to expose them to that kind of thing helped to get them to where they are right now. So I felt like whatever I could do to help them get on the right path, then that was my job. So that's why I exposed them to the church to get them involved, to try to help them get out of some of the foolishness they were doing and turn their life around. Yes, ma'am. So you said something interesting. And one of the things that I shared with Brother Michael was that a lot of people downplay the church and they don't believe that the church plays a big enough role in the community. But a lot of times that when you have um, people who don't attend the church and they, they judge from the outside and not understanding what goes within, you spoke about the men in the church, the deacons, the pastors, and the men involved. Um, how important is it today that, because we have more churches now who are um, predominantly women now, and you don't have as many um, men in the church. And if you go to a mosque, you'll see more men in the mosque, while to so many men uh, gravitate towards Islam. So the question I'm asking you is, the involvement of the men at that time, how important that was that for you to lean on them when you needed help? It was very important because I knew that they would probably be a better influence than me as a woman. The men were more stern and I, they were res respectable. The, 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 my children always respected the older people once they were a, a, associated with them. So I felt like just getting them there, getting them there, get them involved, they would be able to get with the right people who could try to steer them in the right direction and it it worked out so I, i'm 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 happy that i went that route because like i said church has always been a part of my life growing up even young we always went to church so by coming here i didn't want to um deny them what i had experienced growing up in my life so my next best thing to them was like let's go to church so and it wasn't no question about, you know, let's, we going. So, uh, and they enjoyed going once they started going. Right. Yeah, and, and I, and I, I, I want to say too, I'm going to stamp, I want to stamp Willie, Willie, uh, Reverend Willie Wilson as well, because it was the kind of church and brotherhood that she introduced us to that, that I would say helped save us because, you know, she took us as we were young, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, then we got old enough to say, you know, we we going to skip church this Sunday, 16, 17. But then when we found ourselves getting into certain situations, she trained the child in which way they should go. And those that training at Union Temple was something that we could fall back on once we realized there was more to this physical life that we was living and some of the spiritual principles and the manhood principles that those brothers were teaching at Union Temple was something that had us to something that we could fall back on. And, and we took ourselves back. She took us early, but we took ourselves back later when we right. realized that, you know, there was something that was missing. So the brothers, man, the brothers, the music, the principles, Reverend Wilson had the principles of self, uh, self development and he had manhood training, but he locked us in and locked the brothers down with the brothers over the weekend and do, so all those good things right like that was the foundation that built us and made us strong and it's something that led brother Michael to to uh to the nation for a more of a brotherhood like that because of course as things got uh as we got older and as time went it went back to more sisters in the church again so you know the brotherhood wasn't as strong as it was when we first uh when we first uh went in well so, uh, and Reverend Willie Wilson <laughs> 
So the question I'm asking both of you is, uh, being that you didn't have a male figure in, in your home in a consistent basis, how was it receiving men actually approach you and, and give you that structure or that conversation that most men have with younger boys? How did you receive that when the men were trying to talk to you and tell you, hey, certain things you do and don't do as men? How did you receive that? Oh, man, it, it was it was what is it? It was actually actually what we needed, you know what I'm saying? And especially when you have certain type of men, like so many names was popping up in my head as they were talking. Wayne Powell, Deacon Kraft, Deacon Brown, Deacon Jack, you know, uh, and I, I can go on and on and on. Brother Dennis McCall, Eric Kareem. It, it was so many brothers who they knew they knew what we were facing. Mm -hmm. You know, and and they knew how to approach us. They never judged us. You know what I'm saying? They never judged us. They listened to where we were. You know what I'm saying? And then they knew from that point, you know, how to guide us from the training that they received. You know what I'm saying? So and they were strong. Wilbur Burgess, I, look, I shouldn't start naming names, you know, but these brothers, and these are brothers who have gone through their own, who have gone through their own challenges, you right. know, and because of the bond that they, that, that was established there, and that's one of the principles of self-development. When you got a, when you got, when you have something called the nine principles of self-development, and the first principle is fellowship, two or more people come together with common interest and common goal, the second one is bond. You know what I'm saying? Bond, that which holds the group together. And the spiritual bond is the most important bond. Love, to be able to express oneself totally. Uh, truth, you know, the reality, the way things are, not the way you want to be, not the way they should be. Trust, to have no question about. Commitment, a right to some input, but no question about the final result. Spirit, soul, self. Spirit, that unseen, incorporeal part of us to control the way we act. Soul, that un un incorporeal part of us Unseen corporal powers control the way we feel. And spirit, uh, self, the equal combination of the two. Those principles is what governed the brotherhood and the sisterhood in the church. So you couldn't get out of those principles in any situation that you were involved in. So and that that that's what made it tight and close knit. You couldn't wiggle out of those principles, you know. And so it was a powerful thing. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, brother. Yes, sir. Spot on. So, Miss Betty, as you've seen the men getting involved in your your uh your sons developing the nation of Islam, you know, brother Michael gravitated, and I'm sure brother Thomas uh saw the value of that. From your perspective, you know, as a woman who been deep in the church, and then uh actually seeing your son gravitate towards Islam and what made him today. What's, what's your feedback on that? I, I love it. I love Minister Farrakhan. I love him. And the principles that they are teaching, I, I, I wouldn't take anything for it. I think it's it's super. I love the Muslims, as people say. <laughs> and uh, But I, 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 it's no difference. I feel like there's no difference. There's a bond between the two. And, and, and we've always accepted them at Union Temple. That's how I met, the, first came in contact with Minister Farrakhan at Union Temple. And then the sisters and brothers all, we were just one big old family. So it's, I, I, I love the relationship. It's, it's godly, as I call it. Mm. So um, I would take nothing for the relationship that Michael has with the now Muslims and me too. Actually, I got a relationship with them as well. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And that, that's a beautiful thing that you said that because a lot of times that we have more in common than we have in our differences and we are more powerful as a unit. And this is where primarily this conversation I wanted to, you know, utilize because even though Brother Michael, uh, and Brother Thomas entered the church. Islam and Christianity took the best part 
of the men, whether to be part of the church, part of the nation. Mm-hmm. I think it was men of God, period, that got involved. And I believe that if we can settle our differences of not what we uh, disapprove of or don't agree with, but settle on the best part, we can save more lives. And we can thank God that we have Brother Thomas here. We have Brother Michael here because even though they were doing things you didn't know about and we smile about it today, things could have turned for the worse very easily. Absolutely. Um, and no parent wants to bear the idea of not having their children lost to the streets where we, we are dealing with it every day. So we want to thank God for the men. Exactly. Yes, sir. Church. We want to thank Allah for the nation of Islam of us actually seeing our brothers for who they are and saying your relationship with God is a personal relationship, you know, but the common denominator is our unification and that's key. So I'm, I'm happy that this story came out the way it did, that it demonstrates how important the church plays a role in our community. The men play a role in the community as well. So what do you want to see more of, because times have changed, Ms. Betty, what do you want to see more of when it comes to uh, faith-based organizations who may not be as welcoming that, or, and to invite other uh, branches of religion, if I may say, into their space where we can do more good? Because right now, as we speak, there are young men murdering each other. We got missing black women that haven't been found. Women, young women are killing each other just as much as the men now these days. So what do you want to see more of as an elder in that community? I, I, I would like to see more togetherness between all of the so-called denominations or religious aggregations. We can just be one big family. And I encourage that. I have no problem dealing with anybody's religion because it's everybody has a choice to do what it is that they feel they need to do. But I greet them all because we're all one big family as far as I can. It, so that's the only way that we can make life better for everybody in the world is for all of us to come together. But we got people out here who are speaking that kind of thing. And I agree with it. So I'm very open to all of the whomever. I mean, you know, can't tell people what, what your God is like or what my God is like. Because actually, it's one God. That's all it is. So we might call each other by different names or whatever, but it's all the same. It's, it's the same thing. Right. What we, we believe, treat everybody right. That's how I feel. Like, no matter who it is, black, white, yellow, whatever, Muslim, Christian, Jehovah, it doesn't matter. We all in this thing together. So we need to come together and act like we all just, we, we just different people doing different things. But the main objective is for all of us to come together and do what the creator would have us do. So that's how I feel about it. And I, I greet everybody because I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm, religion means absolutely nothing when it comes to people. People are people. We're all the same. So, you know, what you believe, I don't have nothing to do with what you believe, but I know there's a higher power for all of us. So that's what we all should think about. But, I mean, we can't control people. But that's right. just my take. And I believe that God is good. And Allah God, whoever you want to call him, Jehovah, whatever his name is, it's all the same. He is working for our good. Yes, ma'am. That's, that's, that's beautiful that you said that. And I want to just ask uh, my brothers that because of your experience and the things that you've been through, for being in the streets and stuff, what have you, and Brother Mike, I know from what we're part of, what have you, but Brother Thomas, I'm going to start with you. When you see a young brother, you're familiar, because a lot of things that I tell a young brothers is, 
I was once your age, it was never mine. And I, the things that you're doing, you're just repeating patterns that's going to lead one way. There's no way of changing it. And a lot of our younger people think they're smarter than the circumstances that only leads to one direction. You know what I'm saying? They think they're smarter than the streets. And they don't know how powerful the streets are. The streets is, is very strong. And it, it's always someone bigger, badder, smarter than you around the corner. So my question to you is, being that you know these things, how involved are you with the youth as far as trying to pull them in? Because right now, we're in a crisis where we're losing babies now, where they don't see value in life. And they may be in the same circumstances you have because right now there's a mom probably working. She has to work. But in the back of her mind, she, is, she doesn't know where her children are. They don't know if they're home or they're doing something they're not supposed to. That 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 element is in the back of their head. So what do you do to share with those young men or young women on what route they should take, Brother Thomas? Yes, sir. Well, well, uh, outside of the music and uh, the movies and whatnot that we that we're working on to give those positive messages of how we move and who we are. Um, when when I speak to them, and I'm affectionately known as Pops to all the, the young ones around in, in my neighborhood. So I have maybe about a hundred godchildren, but <laughs> but in our conversations, I listen to them and I speak with them and let them know where I came from, and I always make them aware of the other side of who they are. You know, you're not just this physical human being that you think you are with these limitations running around out here in these streets, but those thoughts and those that let you know that you 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 know when you're doing something wrong. You feel when you're doing something wrong. That voice, that inner voice that speaks to you, you are the kingdom of God. Your your vessel is where God dwells. And and if you can take a little time, take some thoughts, take a moment to think about how you're moving before you move and listen to that inner voice sometimes. Listen to that inner voice all the time if you can. But take time Man, you can meditate. It's cool. It's all right to be, be to meditate, soldier. It's all right to listen to that voice, soldier. And look, and we spiritual first. And I know I sound crazy, but man, we spirit first, and then we physical, bro. You a god, soldier. You a god, sister. I'm trying to tell you, man. Set back, stay back. You don't have to follow the crowd. You can. It, it's better to be different. It's better to be stand on your own. It's better to stand. Back and be separate from what the crowd is doing, and, and and then you know, and as I speak to them, God always give me something to say in that moment, in that moment. So I'm always waiting to hear from from God in my speak to them, in my speech to them, and then the way I move and how they see me move and how I greet them as a God, as a young God, as a young soldier, as a young sister, a queen, and let them know that you don't have to let how the world moves be the way you move. Because you know what I'm saying, a, 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 a God can think on their own. Right? You know what I mean? And, that, and that's what you are, soldier. And that's what you are, sister. And you can, and, and, and look, I'm trying to tell you something. I've been, I'm not trying to, and, and a couple of them, they come back and say, Pops, you told me, you tried to tell me. I'm trying to look, I ain't telling you something that I'm making up or something I don't know. I'm telling you where I've been. And I'm trying to give you a head start on where you don't have to go and give you a little food for thought. So I, I always I always let them know that a inner, there's an inner, inner being that that voice you hear, we all hear. Listen to that voice sometimes and move on that instead of moving on how the, the, the big crowd is moving all the time. So I'm talking to them all the time. I'm Pops. What's up, Pops? <laughs> so I'm always giving the pop love, bro. Yes, sir. Brother Michael, same question, good brother. I know what we're part of, but it's good to get that, that extra perspective. Yeah, it's that same, you know, um, just on top of what what slick, what Thomas is saying. Um, and you know, just to add to it, like I I I the point I try to make most often is that. You know, it's a mirror, a mirror reflection. Like when you look at me, you're looking in the mirror. You know what I'm saying? Most of what you are doing, you know, <laughs> it came from the fact that we were doing it first. You know right. what I'm saying? <laughs> and so um, and it's just over time, it just 
has gotten worse, but on the principal level, it's the same thing, you know? So I'm responsible for you, you know what I'm saying? And so I approach it in that manner. I'm responsible for you, especially because, you know, Allah blessed me through it, you know, to a degree to where we can get to the, to the other side and then start working on myself on this side and growing on this side. But the point is, you know, you looking at a mirror reflection. And a lot of times you got to open yourself up. And that was the whole point for the book. Like, like, I want you to know you're not just talking to somebody. You know, I didn't drop out of heaven. You know what I'm saying? Um, this is some real life stuff that we were blessed to come through. So right. now, since I'm open, you know what I'm saying? It'll give you more of a, a willingness to open yourself up. And that's how these youngers roll. Like, they want some real, man. Be real with me. Man, don't right. give me n- nothing. Don't give me nothing, man saucy and spacey man give me something real you know what i'm saying and so that's how and just being out there you know you got you know being out there to have to deal with them you know what i'm saying because if we're not out there then you know what i'm saying we part of the problem right yes sir so in closing um we definitely want to thank the family for being on here and you know, it, there's a lot of lessons in everything that's been said, you know, and we want to commend Miss Betty, um, you know, for not giving up, even though she didn't know a lot of things that went on. <laughs> but we just want to thank God that it, it, it went the way that it did. Yes. That, you know, I'm happy to see that my brother Thomas is able to have his arm around his mother and brother Michael's able to smile and have a beautiful family and be able to maintain where he does. Because, you know, you're here to tell a story or share with the other people your experiences. So hopefully we can save at least one life. Exactly. Somebody is watching this alone that it can be done. And, um, you know, for all the single mothers out there, we applaud you for doing what you do. And if you got a young man at home, you know, there's, there are men out there. That, is, that balance is needed for young boys to be around men. And um, whether it be Muslim brothers or brothers in the church, there's always a brother out there who cares enough to want to help, who's not after anything physical from you, but he just want to be a good brother, big brother, uncle or father figure necessary there. And then, you know, you, you, you uh, played accordingly. But with that being said, Ms. Ben, do you have any closing words or remarks that you want to share? with the listening audience, ma'am? Well, first you gotta be, in your mind, think about what you're seeing, what's going on out here, be more aware of whatever. That's what I learned from the whole thing. Try to be more aware of what's happening around you so that you can help if you need to, but I really thank and uh, praise God for my sons and all that they that they went through and all that they came through and got out of on the good side. And I'm grateful that things worked out the way that they have. And they have both become excellent men, fathers, brothers, and all of all of the above. And I'm very proud of them. And I'm looking forward to big bigger things from them so they already know this because i've already said it so <laughs> we are uh living this life together and i appreciate them and i thank god for them all our god all of them because i'm i'm all of them i'm christian muslim and every all the rest of the religions Come on, because man. it's all the same it's we, we're all in this thing together so and i appreciate you for your time and attention and uh for having me on just to say my little piece <laughs> about what went on in this these two guys life so i appreciate you as well because i think a lot of you as well i think well you could be my son my brother or whatever too yes, hey. ma'am. yes ma'am. I am. <laughs> this is why i appreciate you very much because as we shared in the beginning of the segment i'm gonna respect you as you are my mother 
And that's how you're supposed to carry it. This is why I bit my tongue the way I did when I, when I get frustrated or what have you. So um, we need that respect of our elders and our mom, because that's how we grew up. You know, they were my brothers, my brother Michael, my brother Thomas, you know what I'm saying? And the key word I said was brother. So if, you, if, that's, if they're, that's your children, then you're my mom, you know what I'm saying? Cause exactly, that's exactly. And I'm pretty sure my mother would treat them the same way. You know, vice versa. That's where the unit, the unit comes in at. So yes, we right. appreciate you. Right. Yes, thank you. I appreciate you as well. And uh, right, this this was a great experience for me. I feel like I'm in Hollywood. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> Uh, brother Thomas, closing words, good brother. Oh man, hey, all praise is due to Allah, man, the one God, whoever, however you want to call him, it's only one, bro. Uh, and I just want to, I just want to say, bro, I appreciate the time as well, and let all the listeners know that, uh, you know, that 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 we we are the kingdom of God, the spirit of God dwells in us, and and, and we can do all things. Through the God that strengthens us, and 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 don't limit yourself to physical protoplasm. That you are a God and move like that and believe that, and that that's how I want to leave it right there. So, <laughs> and brother Michael, uh, yes, yeah. sir, you are the reason why we're here because you wrote a beautiful book. And once again, if you have not uh, gotten this book, is the um, walking. The Road to Recovery, Nine Steps in Motion by Brother Michael Muhammad, a beautiful read. You can get it on Amazon, and I definitely highly recommend it. Um, you know, Brother put a lot of his heart into this, and you want to give his as much support as possible. So, Brother Michael, close the words, good brother. Yes, sir. First of all, I want to thank you again for having us on. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, um, these two right here is, I'm gonna try to do this without any emotion, right? Cause you know, I'm almost 700 miles away now, you know what I'm saying? But these are, these are two of my heroes, you know? My brother, been my big brother. He been, he, he been the man figure in my life, you know, even though we're a year apart, you know what I'm saying? But he's always been there as a protector, you know what I'm saying? As a guide, as a uh, strength for me, you know what I'm saying? Um, so I appreciate being on here with him. And then of course my mother, you know what I'm saying? That's like, shh, man, the world, I owe the world to my mother, you know what I'm saying? Just for being the person that she is. Like you said on the, on the beginning, like a mother's love is, is next to God's love, man. And so. I'm grateful because I get on here a lot and I do a lot of different things because I'm promoting this and promoting that or what have you. But to be on with these two is like the greatest honor, you know what I'm saying? And so I appreciate you for that. Praise be to God. I want to thank all the family for actually participating and actually opening up so we can learn from things that you've gone through. And it was definitely an honor and a privilege to have Ms. Betty on, Brother Thomas and Brother Michael, as always. And that's the nature of this program that we're doing is to share stories that don't get out as they should. You know what I'm saying? So we can learn from one another and use this platform called the internet for good. It doesn't have to be used uh, in a global way. It can be used for learning and healing in the same token. So thank you for being a teacher tonight of teaching us on how to deal with certain circumstances and I pray that whoever listens and learns and takes the format that you know we can be of great service. So uh, Brother Levon X if you Levon X me reporting, thank you for being part of the program. Inshallah to the next time we see you again. Please be best. Thank you family. Thank you. Good night. Thank you a lot. The Quran teaches, if either or both of them reach old age with thee, say not, mm.
Say not fie to them. You know how sometimes you can get angry with your parents and say, mm. Now some of you say more than that. But the Quran says you shouldn't say to your mother as much as mm. or fie, meaning shame on you. It says, Speak to them a generous word and lower to them the wing out of humility and out of mercy. Look at this now. The wing here means that you are up in age now. Some of you 20, some of you 25 and 30 and you have children and now you feel the wing of your power and your mother and your father are going down into the valley of death and they are not as strong as they once were when you were young but you and I are told lower your wing. Don't show your power with your mother. Don't show forth your power with your father. Lower your wing of humility out of mercy. Out of mercy. And say, my Lord, have mercy on them. They brought me up when I was little. Isn't that beautiful? Lower to your mother. your wing of humility out of the quality of mercy and say my lord have mercy on them for they nurtured me when i was young again the quran teaches in the 46th chapter in the 15th verse and we have enjoined on man the doing of good to his parents. His mother bears him with trouble and she brings him forth in pain. And the bearing of him and the weaning of him is 30 months. Till when he attains his maturity and reaches 40 years, he says, My Lord, grant me that I may give thanks for thy favor, which thou hast bestowed on me and on my parents, and that I may do good which pleases thee, and be good to me in respect of my offspring. Truly I turn to thee, and truly I am of those who submit. Now this is a little deeper than just a mother bearing a child for the ter term 30 months and then 40 years is mentioned. Heaven is at the feet of mother. Holy Mary, mother of God. Let's answer. Beloved, you will admit that as a people we need to be nurtured we need to be fed we need to grow up all of us male and female have a lot of growing up to do which means we still need mothering Psychologically, we've been damaged. Emotionally, we've been damaged. Intellectually, we're not secure. And economically, we still are like children depending on white people to do for us that which if we were properly nurtured, we could say to them, thank you for whatever you have done. Now we'll go for ourselves. Huh? When a child comes of age, you know you begin to feel your oats, as the old saying goes. Mom and dad may tell you come in at a certain time and you come in two hours later. 
Mama said, get your room clean. You say, I don't care. Mama said, do the dishes all. Well, since two women can't be in the same house, when you begin to feel that you can't take mother's orders anymore, it looks like it's time now. For the eagle to stir the nest and for the baby to fly or die because we can't live in the same house grown. Here we are in America. Don't like the way white folks are treated. Telling them at every turn, I don't like this. And I don't want that. And if you don't give me this, I'll do that. Well, I think you're coming of age now. And if you're coming of age and you're beginning to feel that you want to stretch out, you can't stretch out in the white man's house unless you take his house over and make it your house. And if you can't take his house over and make it your house, and he's not going to let you come in and make it your house, then it's time, I guess, to seek a house of our own. We need a mother. We need a mother that loves us and will suffer with this old rebellious child. And Lord, it tests a mother's love when she got a rebellious child. Everything mama tells the child to do, the child say, hey, I do what I want. Child will fake mother out. Make mama think I'm on my way to school, ma. And end up all day long in the movie house, in the pool room, or in some other place, snorting coke or sniffing glue or smoking reefers or fornicating or doing something that they shouldn't be doing. When you got a bad child, mother don't stop loving it. Child is bad. All your friends say your child is no good. You ought to just give up on that little point so. But a mother's love is not like that. A mother's love keeps on trying with the child. The black nation needs a divine mother. The black nation needs a divine nurturer. Since you're too old now to really mother him, and since you don't have the hood or the knowledge on your head to do for the man what needs to be done, and he doesn't have the hood on his head to do for his children what needs to be done. This motherless child, this fatherless child is now seeing a hard time. So if God doesn't step in and answer our needs as a people, we are lost. Because as a mother, you're bringing up children not to the black man, but you're bringing up children to the white man who has no love for the father of those children. Come here now. You're bringing up children with the conqueror's ideas. You're bringing up children to salute the conqueror's flag to fight for the conqueror's freedom while we as men have not yet enjoyed the freedom that America claims to give her citizens. Am I right? You become a great musician, you never get the recognition they get. We are trained to love them. We are trained to give everything to the conqueror and nothing to ourselves. You did this unwittingly because you are a conquered woman that don't have a man you are a subjected black woman that don't have a strong black man who can break the chains of the conqueror and say I am your man <laughs> Bible says
days of the slave master, they lived deliciously. I guess so. When they have had the freedom of our women, sometime our little girls have lost their virginity in the back of stores owned by aliens in our community. Sometimes our women have lost their virtue by fathers who don't know how to handle the love of their own daughters. Our women have caught hell. Heaven lies at the feet of mother. But Lord, who will turn mother around that we can get heaven from her feet? But today, she's produced children of hell. You mean well. We never would have come this far without you. You mean good. You're in the church and you're singing and you're shouting. You mean good. But you need more knowledge for your head that you may do the job that is required of a woman. What is the nature of you, black woman? What is the nature of the black man so that we may measure how well we have mothered them? This Quran teaches us that Allah has created us in His nature. And it is the nature in which He has created man. If the nature of man is the nature of God and that nature is righteous, then you cannot mother your children if you don't raise them up in righteousness. And you cannot train them up in righteousness if you are not an example of the righteousness that comes from your mouth. You can't say one thing from your mouth and live totally different from what you say. We got to be what we preach. Train them up in the way they should go. You are the people of God and you must be fed with a nurturing of wisdom that feeds the divine nature that we grow and evolve from a child to a human being right on up to a divine being when you get the child to a certain level your day of mothering is over then the father takes over and the father fathers that's what it means can you run father yes i can run further than you can well, the name Father means you have generated your seed in another generation. You've gone Father. And you and I must take our children and make them go further. You understand? All praise is due to our lives.